Hello, uh, this is a quick introduction to directional valves. Um, we'll just really show you how they work, what they do, um, take you to buying replacements. We will look at characteristics and specifying them, uh, more advanced tips and tricks in a later later video. But uh, quite simply, based, uh, directional valves are very simple valves. They take the flow and pressure of the fluid from one position and here we can see it isolated it can't go anywhere and then we switch it we've got a two position one way valve here so it switches to the second position and connects this you can see the arrow then would switch here and the flow would come through the valve uh, into the other port very simply we've got solenoids and a spring return to operate it um, so the next valve we've got a two position three way so this will probably be the pressure port a port and the tank return port and in one condition it takes the flow through to the a port and in the other condition it allows it to come back to the reservoir getting really complicated now we've got a two position four way valve so we've got probably b t a and b and as you can see it just switches between the two different ports this is just cylinder control drives it one way and drives the cylinder backwards again very simple um, the only thing with directional valves is there just are so many different types you have to be careful when you're ordering one this one's got a detent so there's no springs it switches stays there and uh, until you switch it back to the other direction um, again even more complicated we've got a three position four-way valve so P, T, A and B again. In the centre condition we're just uh, venting all our ports to reservoir and then when we switch it in one direction we get flow from B to A and then we switch it from the other direction we get um, P to B. So we've now got a condition, a standby condition uh, and again switching our cylinder probably from one direction to the other. So as I say the uh, only thing you have to be aware of, there's so many different versions. You can have electrical solenoids, springs. When we see this little um, triangle here, it means it's a pilot supply, so that will be a two-stage valve. Um, hand operation, button operation, proportional we wouldn't get, uh, and manual levers. So, um, lots of different options, and here we can see the two-stage valve, which looks very similar to the single stage, but we've just got these uh, symbols here, and this one has got external pilots, X and Y, so it would have some um, additional lines into it. What we don't want to talk about today are proportional valves. If you see this extra line, it's a proportional valve, perhaps arrows on the solenoid. It is a um, quite different valve, performs quite differently, so... Um, We'll talk about that again later. Um, just one other quick thing. This is not a five position valve. This is our three position valve. But as it changes from one condition to another, uh, there are options for whether that changeover is closed, the changeover is open. can have a big issue depending on what pumps you're using, what supply you've got. So um, again, it's something you need to, you don't, need to know about if you're designing it. Uh, there are lots of different versions available. The reason for showing you this and confusing you with all these options really is because if you are replacing a valve, look on the valve body, there will be a label. Take that code and uh, give that to the give the exact code and the full code to the supplier. Um, or if you want to you can get their data sheets and you can see exactly what type of valve that is. This is um manufacturer data sheet and you can see every uh, aspect of the valve is specified and there may be a few extra numbers on the end that aren't in the data sheet that quite often happens with special valves so um, make sure you put all those numbers down and you do order to get the correct valve or it may come out with different materials uh, materials, seals, internal performances there are lots of things can change that we'll uh, discuss later um, so these are what they look like uh, we can have a cartridge insert, so this fits into a manifold, special manifold. Um, our C-top valve, very common size 6 C-top valve, 
If we look and we can see the spool here, it's got very straight edges, so it's either open or closed. Uh, more tiny little leakages. Um, it is a spool, this is a spool valve, so there will be a certain amount of leakage between the ports all the time. There's no way we can get away with that. You can get um, poppet directional valves though, um, which will seal in and not have any leakage. Um, this is our two stage valve, so we've got a small valve on top as a pilot and then a larger spool element underneath. If you've got large flows and these take a lot of forces so you need a good force to make sure they um, stay where they're supposed to be. Um, I put this little picture in which is a mobile directional valve. A lot of the mobile valves are called directional valves but they've got notches and they've got levers so if you open it part way with a notch you only get part flow which is a proportional valve um, so they're not true directional valves although obviously they uh, control the direction of flow so um, mobile valves are not so much a lot of them are, a lot of them are proportional as I say um, this would be what a mobile valve looks like they compact everything into a very small space Obviously uh, weight and costs are important, but um, could well be with big levers like that, that's probably a proportional valve. This is a um, directional valve, an industrial one, so we've got a C-top interface on the bottom and it, it will be just open or closed. Here's our cartridge. Um, there are different cartridges there, so, just so you can see what they look like. And um, the small size 6 valve and the larger two stage valve with the size 6 one on top and a little control slice in between now let's get we can have some fun with our little experiment we've um we can drive our cylinders up and down operate our directional valves and you can see what happens uh, just to really to make you aware at this stage there's lots of things going on you don't need to know about this stage but we have got our pilot operated check valve here so um, we did that in an earlier course you can see uh, that holds the cylinder nicely in position and if we take it away there's nothing to stop the fluid running out so um, you can experiment and play with the different things here if you want to just to understand what's happening but we'll cover a lot of these issues in later later videos